it's really windy in Scotland and it's really important to harness that wind. And this is how we harness it. It's too big to get in the picture. off at Arnish Moor. Uh, we just took a wee look at some of these big wind turbines which are pretty spectacular. Uh, the reason we stopped here is because Julie's got a story for you. Well, the story starts a couple of hundred years ago when two young boys instead of going to school headed over this moor mm -hmm. and decided to steal grouse eggs. Right. Through their stealing of the grouse eggs, they ended up fighting with each other on who was getting the fair share of the eggs, and one boy stove the other boy's head in with a big rock. So, that boy was so horrified and disgusted with himself, he buried his friend, didn't tell anybody, and ran away to sea. That's not the end of the story. Many years later, the same boy, a grown man now, returned to Stornoway been to the sea for many years and it changed a lot and people didn't recognise him but he went through um, the town and went to his usual haunts and he went to an inn to get some food and he did have to comment to the landlady that his cutlery had very strange handles she said it was old sheep bones that she had picked up on the moor but when he started eating his food the bones attached to the cutlery started bleeding because the old dictum says that if you've murdered someone and you touch their bones again, they bleed. So obviously it wasn't an old sheep carcass. But the story's not over yet. Now, the sailor owned up to his crime and was hanged. But many, many years later, as late as 1964, the person who had been murdered was still haunting these moors. In the 1800s, ministers had said that no one would travel the moor at night and no one would travel the moor alone. But in 1964, a man was leaving to go back to Stornoway from Grimshitter um, on his motorbike, which obviously was travelling at 30 miles an hour apparently. Not a great motorbike. No. no. It's that road there as well. Yeah, it is quite a bad road. And it was maybe Drake that night. <laughs> but the ghost of the murdered boy managed to keep up with his motorbike for several miles and he refused to get onto the moor again on his motorbike and he used to get the ferry to work instead. The story's not over yet. The final thing in the tale in this story takes place 20 years ago in and around. There were a couple of guys out on the moors cutting turf or peat when they came across a body. The body was taken to the forensics department in Edinburgh University and it was deemed to be the boy that allegedly had been murdered. It was the body of a young boy. He was dressed in 1700 garb and he had definitely been killed by a blow to the head. Strange, mm -hmm. but true. Yeah. See, I was just going to tell you the story about how they found the bog body and he was dressed in 1700 clothes. <laughs> But Julie obviously looked up more than I did. <laughs>